Okay, YouTube, uh, this is a video response to Nothing Fancy's extended stay backpacking video. Uh, I've been watching a lot of videos online uh, lately, and I just felt like I should, uh, you know, give some people some more options out there on, you know, what other people like to take. Uh, I know I'm personally one of the ones who likes to get everyone's opinions, and, you know, from there, pick my own uh personal backpacking supply and what I like to take. So I'm actually going on a four day uh, hike tomorrow. I'm going on the Appalachian Trail. I'm going to do a loop near Fontana Dam. We're going to do about 35 to 40 miles. Uh, some of the trails are off the beaten path, so I don't really know the distances on them, but I know we'll be on the Appalachian Trail for about 18 uh, from Fontana Dam to one of the shelters up there. So basically what we have here is everything I take on a hike right there that's it that's all I take minus food and clothing of course I'm picking my my food up tomorrow um, I ordered it from packetgourmet.com it's basically freeze-dried and dehydrated food if you guys have ever heard of it you know it and if you haven't check it out packetgourmet.com it's the best trail food I've ever had in my entire life. And it's super easy. One pot meals, you just boil water and add it. And some of the ones, you don't even have to boil water. You just add cold water. Uh, like chicken salad is one of the meals. And it's freaking awesome. Um, okay, so basically what we'll do is I'll just go over what I have. Uh, and, you know, how I got to this point uh, on camping. And I'm big into... I guess you could say you could call this an ultralight setup. Uh, I wouldn't call this an uber light setup. I've got friends who even go lighter than this, but I like to have some creature comforts that other people do not have or take. Um, and okay, so here we go. So basically, over here, we'll start over here with the heavier items. Um, let me get my chair. Okay, right here we have the Big Agnes Seed House SL2. Uh, as you can see right there, it says Seed House SL2. All right, this tent is not the lightest two-person freestanding tent on the market, but it's one of the it's one of them. It's a sub three-pound tent. I think it weighs two pounds fourteen ounces uh, with the poles and the stakes. Now you can actually get that lighter if you go to a company online called Fibroplex. They make carbon fiber poles. Uh, and you can have them made for any tent you have. You have. You just take some measurements on some poles, and they'll make them. Or you can send them their your poles, and they'll make them. That's fibroplex.com. Uh, great company. Uh, I have a set of their tent poles, but I haven't gotten them for this set yet, um, just because they're kind of expensive. But basically, this is an ultralight two-person tent. Um, it's sill nylon and mesh body. Uh, comes with the fly, comes with everything you need. It's a little tight for two people, but if it's you and you know your girlfriend or you and your husband, you know whatever, um, there's room for the two of you. Or if it's you and a dog, there's room. Okay, so moving on down the line, uh, I have the Thermarest um, Ultralight Fast and Light Chair Kit. That's a comfort that I like to take. Uh, I like to have a seat. Uh, at campsite sometimes people won't take these because they say they're heavy now some of them are out there are heavy but uh, some of them this one I think weighs six ounces uh, so not that much in the grand scheme of things now this is a purchase I made uh, last year this is the best thing I've ever bought in my entire life it's the Thermarest Neo Air as you can see that is a full size 72 inch by 20 inch by two and a half inch thick Thermarest it blows up and it has an R value of two and a half um, the only other company that makes a pad that light is Big Agnes, and that's their clear view. I've used that, but it punctures extremely easily. It's a sticky rubber PVC type thing. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of it, um, so I went with the Thermarest. Yeah, it's way more pricey, at, priced at $150, but that is well worth the money in my opinion. Uh, two and a half inches thick. If you're a side sleeper, it works really, really well, which I am. Uh, now we'll go to the pillows. I, ha I take two pillows just because I like to sleep with a pillow between my leg. Um, this is the Cocoon Air Core Inflatable Pillow. Uh, that's what I use between my legs. And then underneath my head, I use the Thermarest Pack Pillow. I usually don't even uh, pack it down. I keep it like this in my pack because I've, I've got a 55 liter pack, which I'll show you in a minute. 
Uh, so I've got plenty of room for all this stuff. Um, next, one of the things I like to take for lunch and just lounging around at the campsite is an Eno hammock. Here's an Eno hammock and straps. Um, it's just one of the things I like to carry. Sometimes I'll carry it, sometimes I won't. Uh, it just depends on, you know, the trip and yada, yada, yada. Um, I like it, though. It's, it's just something that I like to carry. But I've gone so light that I can add that. It is heavy, but... Um, like I said, I've gone so light that I can actually add some extra creature comforts that people might not always add. Uh, some paracord for a bear bag, 50 foot. Um, this book right here, Appalachian Pages, is the best through hikers handbook for the Appalachian Trail. Look it up online. I single-handedly have never seen a better book. It's more comprehensive than this book. And you can rip out the pages. They're perforated. You can't really see it here. Uh, but you can rip them out as you go along if you're through hiking. Next is my water filtration. I use the MSR Hyperflow. Um, love, 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 love this filter. It's really easy to use, really easy to take apart. Comes apart in like six pieces when it's completely disassembled. Uh, super easy maintenance. You just back flush it every few liters. I think it's like every eight liters you back flush it with a half liter of clean water and you're good to go. Uh, next, I don't go overboard with the uh, medical kit. I just take an Adventure Medical Kit Ultralight .3. Um, I've added some stuff in here like ibuprofen, some extra alcohol wipes, uh, maybe some diarrhea medicine and stuff like that just in case. Um, but nothing big, nothing real, real big. It's got some gauze, some pads, some mole skin, that kind of stuff. Um, this is a field repair kit. It's the, if you can see that, you can't really focus in there. It's the Mick, McNett field repair kit. Uh, what I like about this kit is it's expandable like that. It's so it's a it's like a screw top, so you can add more stuff in there if you want, which is a really nice feature of it, and it also makes it waterproof. Uh, I like this kit; it's just got some seam seals, some patches, a brush, uh, just the basic essentials that you need. You don't really need anything more. Uh, light my fire, um, flint. I think it's good for like twenty thousand strikes. Uh, take some antibiotic, any antibacterial wipes that I wipe down my body at night with. Um, just to get the funk off of me. This is a sea line semi waterproof, water resistant case that I usually put my phone in. Uh, I always carry a cell phone with me, but I keep it off. That's for emergency purposes. That's something I think everyone should take as a cell phone or a locator beacon or something like that. Uh, moving down the line, Swiss Army Watch, uh, Snow Peak, um, Titanium Fork and Spoon Combo. They also have one that comes with a knife, but I don't need the knife because I carry a knife. Uh, so that's just something cheap and easy and light that I like to take. Uh, here's the knife I take. I take a fixed blade with a sheath knife. I only take this one knife. I don't take a pocket knife and a backup knife. Don't worry about all this backup crap. Um, you know, the Boy Scouts like to say, be prepared. This is a be prepared kit. I've actually gone to Boy Scouts troops and given them the spiel before as I used to work in the, in the outdoor industry. So this, you know, so I've, I've got some... I would call myself an expert on this. Uh, next is the Sea to Summit iPood uh, pocket trowel. It just folds up into this pack. That's what I take. It's, it's aluminum, uh, so it's sturdy. That's the only trowel I take, and it's light. Uh, these are my REI rain pants, um, platypus bottle for drinking water at camp. Uh, it's easier than lugging around your big bladder, and it's super light. Uh, this is a Sea to Summit pack cover nylon sill nylon pack cover uh msr titanium titan kettle um i pretty much only boil water or make soup or something like that in it uh it's good and it nests together with your fuel and your stove um right now i don't have my stove out here i usually have a, um an msr pocket rocket but my buddy is bringing his stove that i'm going camping with this weekend so that's why i'm not taking that Here's some uh, fire starter. These things are called lightning bugs. I really like these. Uh, they're quick and easy to start a fire if you don't have enough tender to start a fire. Uh, next is the you know Camelback 100 ounce reservoir. And then this is my pack. Uh, it's a Mountain Hardware Super Scrambler. It's a flexible internal frame pack. It's super light, super comfortable. It's almost 60 liters, I think. I think it's like the large size is 58 liters, maybe. Uh, I really like it a lot. Next is my Rudy Project Zion Tactical Sunglasses. 
Uh, I got these for shooting, and the transition lenses or the photochromatic, whatever you want to call them, lenses work really, really well in the outdoors. And last but not least is one of my favorite love-hate items. Uh, it is the Mountain Hardware Phantom 45 sleeping bag. I take a 45 sleeping bag. There's no sense in taking a zero-degree sleeping bag when you're going to, uh, you know, be out in the woods. It, I mean, unless it's going to get zero degrees, don't take a zero-degree bag. Even in the wintertime, yeah, I live in the southeast, but I go as, usually as far north as Virginia, and I'll take this Phantom 45, and then let me get it real quick. Uh, and then I take a Sea to Summit Thermolite Reactor Sleeping Bag Liner. This adds 15 degrees to your bag. Um, and then I might sleep in, like, thermal underwear. I only take one pair in the wintertime, long johns and uh, a top, and then you're plenty, plenty, plenty warm. Uh, they actually have a new one of these that adds 25 degrees to your bag. I mean, that's that's taking a summer bag and turning it into a four-season bag. Plus, this and this sleeping bag weigh less than most uh, down sleeping bags that are zero degrees. And, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so why not take something like that? And it saves you money, too. But I love this. And the reason I hate this sleeping bag is I weigh 250 pounds or I did, I weigh 220 now, I've lost some weight, but it, it's pretty tight, I'm a big dude, my shoulders are really wide, and it, it's a little tight in here, so in the wintertime it can get a little uncomfortable, because I like to move around at night, but uh, I do like it, we'll see how it works this trip, now that I've lost all this weight, so that is my setup guys, and uh, again, you know, this is a video response to nothing fancies, I think he's crazy for taking all that stuff, but I respect the guy, you know, he makes good videos, and, uh, you know, he always preaches that, you know, if you feel differently, make a video. Let's see your credibility. So here's my credibility, nothing fancy. Uh, you know, I like what you do. I respect what you do. And, um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts on it. And then lastly, nothing fancy, I am currently in the process of building my own AR-15. Uh, this is what I have right now, just some lower parts kits and that kind of thing. Um... Grip is on order, stock is on order, and then I got to get some money for an upper and stuff like that. Spikes tactical lower. Really like it a lot. So that's what I have right now. But you'll see a future video on that shortly. Uh, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Leave your comments. Uh, let's keep the comments pertinent to this conversation and not uh, bullshit about, you know, oh, this guy's an idiot or this person who posted this is an idiot. You clearly don't know what you're talking about, kind of thing, because I'll just delete it. So uh, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great night.